Hi everybody, it's Michelle Stelling from the National Association of Digital Scrapbooking and I am back from vacation and ready to start doing Q&A Tuesday again. So welcome to Q&A Tuesday and this um, person writes, um, Sarah from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania wants to know how she can make her own papers. Well, that's kind of a loaded question. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a couple minutes to show you how you can create your own papers using um, brushes uh, because that's kind of a simple way to get started with that. So let's go ahead and let's pretend we're going to be doing a 12 by 12, which is pretty much the industry standard. So we're going to go File and New and Blank File and make sure you set it up properly right from the get-go. So I'm going to go ahead with 12 by 12 and if they're not set to inches, go ahead and make sure that you have them set to inches because if you set them to pixels, they're going to, it's going to be a really, really small piece of paper. And then I will also go ahead and set the resolution to 300 because that's pretty much the industry standard. And then click on OK. So what you've got to do is you've got to think about what color paper you want to create. Um, I'm just going to do, I'm kind of flying by the seat of my pants here. I'm going to go ahead and just do maybe a blue color. So let's just go ahead and bring blue to the foreground. And I'm going to get my paint bucket tool and just fill up that whole background with that blue. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add a layer because I always like to work on layers so that if I don't like it, I can throw it away. So I've got my new layer up here. I'm going to switch it back to maybe a white color because otherwise you won't see blue on blue if I try to do blue with my brushes. Next I'm going to go over to my um, toolbar on the left hand side and I'm going to pull up my brushes. So I can go ahead and click on br the brush tool or I can hit B on the keyboard if you are a shortcut user. Now there's three different brushes here. We're going to talk about this first brush. In fact, I know Barbara, she had a question about brushes as well. It's not the same question, but maybe we'll do a couple weeks um, Q&A on just brushes alone because that's a whole nother kind of Oprah. And if you are a member, I do go into great depth on using brushes, downloading brushes, and things like that. So you can go inside the membership area and take a look at that. But since this is a Q&A Tuesday, it's usually five minutes or under, we're going to go ahead and stick with this regular brush here. You will also have different default brushes. If you click on this little drop up, I guess it is, you see that you have your set to probably default. Um, you can kind of look through what you have. You probably have the same things I do. When you download and you install brushes, you'll see them in this area here as well. But let's just go to assorted brushes because that's where you find some fun things. So I'm just going to pick this one right here, these circles. And when you come out to your page, you can click and drag and that will kind of bring a brush in. Or if you hold down your um, right bracket on your keyboard, that will make your brush size a lot bigger. Okay, So you can go back and forth. You can make small brushes, big brushes, um, so on and so forth. So I'm kind of creating a background here. Now, of course, I don't like that line in there, and they're all in the same layer. So I'm just going to start kind of from the beginning. I'm going to right click and delete that layer, and then create another layer. And let's just say we want this background to be all full of circles. So I'm just going to kind of randomly put a few circles here, then maybe go a little bit bigger and make some more circles, maybe a little bigger. You can even overlap if you want to. Now, when you've got it really, really big, it starts to get a little fuzzy, so you have to kind of be careful with um, how large your brush is going to be because you do want it to be a pretty good quality. So when your brush gets size gets a little bit bigger. Now, notice here that it's a really stark. It's really bright white. I can go over to my um, opacity and take that down if I want to, if I want it to be a really light color and so on and so forth. Let's just go ahead and make another layer, turn that layer off, and try something else. So let's go back into our brushes, and let's just see what else we have available. I think we have a snowflake in here. Yeah, we do. So I'm just going to take this snowflake again to make your brush size bigger. You can go ahead and click on the right bracket. To make it smaller, you click on the left bracket, and you can take the set size down by just coming in here this way. Notice, too, that you can go like this, and create kind of like a flowing effect. You can go into brush settings, which is a whole nother Oprah again. I'm not going to get into it, but you can go in there and you can do some jitter and scatter and all that. We'll have a series. Maybe I'll do the next couple weeks on, on just brushes and have a series of talking about brushes. But that's kind of how you can make your own background um, with brushes. 
uh, Sarah, I believe it was, who asked the question from Pennsylvania. Um, there, you know, again, you can go, let's just go here, let's see, oh, it's hidden, so no, let's go with another layer, maybe go a couple more of these, go a little bit smaller, oops, I just, I just switched it over, so let's go back in there, I pressed the P, I think, instead. And then maybe a little larger. And you can change the color, too. Like, if you wanted to go in here and maybe make, I don't know, make it a different blue shade. Let's just go in there and see what we come up with. That's too close to the background. So let's go with more of a gray. And you can't really see it very well, but it might be something to think about. And go back in there, maybe go a little bit lighter gray. So you can see it a little bit more. There you go. And um, once you are finished, what you're going to want to do is you want to go ahead and merge them all together. So you can either go right click and merge visible. This one here is not visible because that is w with our um, circles. And then you just go File, Save As. And normally you would save it as a JPEG because that's what DigiScrappers, that's their uh, format. So you just go ahead and find JPEG, JPEG as the drop down. Right now it's a PSD, which stands for Photoshop Element, for Photoshop Document. And now we got the JPEG. Then you go ahead and highlight just the name. And maybe you just call this Snowflake Background or, or whatever you want to call it. Snowflake. And then you find your folder, pop it in there, and then you can use that as part of your DigiKit. So that's how you, one way of creating backgrounds for yourself in the digital scrapbook world. So thanks for your question and keep them coming. Also, if you use Gmail, make sure that you are still continuing to get my reminders on classes and free classes and such. They did something different and I'll send out an email here in the next couple days on what you need to do but for some reason I think a lot of the bulk mail email that's going out is going into your junk mail so you might have to do something where are you uh, anything that comes from National Association of Digital Scrapbookers will go into your inbox so check that out if you are using Gmail Another thing too, we are having some more new classes, members only classes, just go to the site naods.com to find out when they are, because we have some really fun and exciting things going on, um, and that's about it. Stay tuned for next week. Thanks for everybody for watching. Bye-bye.